let me start by thanking you um, for continuing the conversation that we started nearly three, four months ago. Um, it was a commitment that we made that we would continue to invest in this engagement with our education customers and our soon-to-be education customers. Um, before I introduce our esteemed guests today, let me um, reintroduce myself. My name is Jason. I've been with Cisco Meraki now for five years, um, leading um, the sales organization across India, Korea, and ASEAN. Today, I'm super pleased to be introducing to you Yvonne and Jim um, from Noodle Factory, the co-founders of Noodle Factory. And before I let Yvonne elaborate a little bit more on what Noodle Factory is, let me give you the snippet, snippet, snippet. It is an AI platform to help teachers, correct? Yes, correct. Super stuff. And can you just elaborate a little bit more because you're much more eloquent. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So Noodle Factory is an AI teaching assistant platform. So what that literally means is it acts as your teaching assistant. And Jim and I co-founded this company four years ago now, in 2018. Uh, we were actually trying to solve our own problem because we were in adult education for the past 13 years. And we found that the hardest thing to scale was actually ourselves. So how do you do that? And now with AI technology, that's something that can be done. It helps to extend the teaching as well as the learning experience for students. Super, super. Well, technology is going to be the pillar of the conversation today. Um, as the CEO and as the co-founders, I know you, you, you all carry multiple hats, but maybe um, your top priorities, Yvonne, and then maybe Jim, you can articulate your top priorities yeah. as well. Um, so we started going into the market even pre-pandemic, before you know, even there was any word of a pandemic. And we had some early adopters at that time with a few of the universities who were very forward thinking. Uh, right now, we're working with a lot more institutions. There's obviously a lot more focus on using tech to accelerate learning and improve the learning experience, sometimes virtually as well. Um, but our top priorities are really working closely with these uh, institutions. We work very intimately with even the faculty members who are the big users of the platform to make sure that it really solves a problem for them. Super. And Jim, your role within Noodle Factory? Yeah, so as a co-founder, you obviously just pick up and do whatever you have to do to, to keep things moving forward. But ideally, my day job is I really think about the teachers and the students and their experience. So my title is Chief Learning Officer. So I, I really try to think about beyond the platform, what's the academic experience like? What's the student experience? What's the, what's the learning experience like? Are, are we seeing students learn more? Um, teachers, are, do they have more time to engage students? And, to, to take a step back and, and to, to talk about one of the things that's a really important aspect of what we do for me is it's that teacher experience. Um, before the pandemic, we were obviously doing this and, and we're in a space called EdTech and that's been a thing for a while, but EdTech really took on a life of its own uh, during the pandemic. In fact, we used to have discussions with investors back in 2019, 20, even in 2018, and it was like, yeah, 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 it's really interesting. It got super interesting in 2020, 2021. And a lot of it has to do with teacher burnout. Um, I mean, teachers are just overwhelmed. We all say we appreciate what they do and we really do, but I don't think we realize the pressure that they're under, even in normal times. And so part of what we try to do is take some of that pressure off by automating a lot of mundane tasks, things that are super important, super necessary, like tutoring, like grading and marking of papers. And if our, our vision and my vision as the chief learning officer is to make that something that a teacher can turn over to an algorithm, still be involved obviously, but turn over to an algorithm and really take advantage of the power of AI so that they can, as a human, focus in on the students. That's, that's what I'm trying to get to with the teachers that we work with at all levels, but particularly universities, secondary schools. Super. and. I, I suspect, right, this is a, a fair comment or nearly a fair comment. I'm hoping that COVID is manageable now. And I hope, I hope we all hope that. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And that this is probably a moment where there's been a lot learned about how technology can play a role in continuing education, whether it's online, offline, physical, remote, the role of ed tech and, and how popular ed tech has become. 
is this now maybe the, a, a, a pivot? Is this now a new opportunity to think about a, a united strategy across IT, faculties, ed tech? And what role do you see Moodle Factory playing in this? I mean, that's a, that's a really good question. I think the COVID and right now it is stabilizing, but we see kind of two sides of it. So there are schools that are, you know, already, and they have already been exploring digital technologies for some time, you know, through the pandemic. But there's also cases where because now it's going back to normal, so schools are really tied up trying to just manage that physical aspect because students are back in the classroom. Um, where we come from and where we've always come from, and I think that's where all ed tech should come from, is that it shouldn't be just, you know, tech for the sake of tech. But it really should be built, you know, the digitized learning should be built uh, into the curriculum planning itself. I think so to, to take a step back from an industry perspective, uh, in the ed tech industry, what we saw in 2020, kind of mid to the end of 2020, was really a reaction to the reality mm -hmm. of the pandemic. We're beyond that reaction now, and I think what we experience in talking with educators uh, particularly those that are interested in digitalizing large aspects of the learning process, moving a lot of what they do to the cloud. It's, okay, now we're beyond the firefighting. How do we really take advantage of this? How do we actually plan and strategize what we do going forward? Because the, the genie's out of the bottle. Mm. What, you know, whether you like the digitalization of education or not, it, it is happening. And the, and the pandemic only accelerated that, like a lot of industries. And so there, there are really innovative institutions and teachers who are saying, how do we get ahead of this? That's a fun conversation to have. Uh, we, we, later in, in our discussion, we might talk about there's some resistance to that as well. So there are barriers to that. So, but, but I think the fun part of what we do is when a teacher is very innovative, when a school is very innovative, they are all in on digitalization. Super. And, and I think... You called out one word that's pretty important to, to Meraki overall, to Cisco Meraki in these days and its experiences where mm. we're, we're focused a lot around hybrid, you know, hybrid learning, hybrid work, um, but it really starts with, with experiences. And Yvonne, I, I'd be particularly keen to get your feedback in terms of um, teacher experiences, um, student experiences, or you can even go to tech support experiences, um, ed tech, you know, so a relatively new you know, pillars of, of, of educational institutions. How, how does um, Moodle Factory, you know, the technology that you offer, the solutions you offer, play a role in changing? Maybe we just narrow it down to teacher experiences. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So a lot of ed tech actually focus on the student experience, which obviously is necessary. But, you know, I was just reading this article about tech-based learning versus tech-based teaching. And a lot of tech actually kind of ignore the teaching aspect. So teachers don't have a lot of time. They are not necessarily the most tech-savvy person. Um, so that's where we really focus on to make it really easy for them to use, to even start using the platform, to load in their content, and to enable them to use it really effectively to make themselves more productive. Um, a lot of times when you think about any sort of digitization, it requires effort from a change from past behavior. So that's not necessarily what we want, like a big overhaul, because people are always, you know, we need to kind of ease into it and see the benefit. So that's where Noodle Factory aims to come in to really build, kind of integrate into part of the teacher's processes and where they see it really acting as their assistant, using AI to assist them to be more productive. Is there like a, a specific um, example that, that you can share like so what what content what what uh, like is it a geography lesson that they've traditionally given um, help, help help us visualize an example so very simply there's two things that we automate and that acts as an assistant to the teachers we assist in tutoring students as well as in marking or grading papers and these are two things that are not necessarily um, very beneficial if the teacher is involved in every interaction. So especially for things where the subjects are fairly concept heavy, there's not a lot of discussion or higher order thinking required, that's where this can be offloaded to the AI. Mm. Similarly, marking, no one likes marking, no teachers like marking, and they spend hours and hours on this. So this is something that AI is good at because it's a very consistent pattern that they just need to follow. And that's where teachers can really, um, you know, 
real a lot of benefit from that. In fact, we worked with one of the schools here who sent us this message and we were really, you know, um, very pleased to receive that message, obviously. On a Friday night, she was telling me that, you know, she's at the movies this evening, which is very unusual because without our platform, she wouldn't have been, she would have been marking papers through the weekend. Mm. So elements, so we're big on simplification, right? And, and it sounds like that could be a tagline for Nuba Factory as well. We're just mm. trying to simplify the teacher's experiences, the teacher's lives. Um, a lot of that sounds like it's automation. And I'm struggling right now to understand why any faculty or educational institution would be hesitating to embrace an opportunity to offload something that could be automated, scaled with confidence. Are you seeing barriers? I don't know, is it Yvonne or Jen? Are you, are you seeing barriers to this adoption? Is it a lack of knowledge? Is it a lack of trust in the, the data, the security? What, what are you seeing as maybe holding holding this back from being embraced? Maybe I'll, I'll jump in on that one. Education has been a very, very traditional sector. I mean, for hundreds of years, right? So, and, and, we, and we've seen some changes, some evolution of education, things like learning management systems and going online partially. But I, I think my experience has been that the barriers are largely a fear of the unknown or sometimes a, a fear about loss of control. And you can take what's going on in education and you can find parallels in other sectors too, um, the, where automation might be seen as a threat rather than an opportunity. But uh, that example that Yvonne shared about the teacher who was able to have a free Friday night, it was something she hadn't had in a long time. I mean, in, in every sector, uh, depending on who, which analysts you listen to, 40, 50, 60% of what knowledge workers do, and teachers are obviously knowledge workers, can be automated. And it's, it's not the things that are unique and valuable that they are highly skilled to do. It's the things that we have to do. It's sort of like our, the overhead of our job. So that overhead is a lot of what we're trying to automate. That's, what, that's the education, pun intended, that we have to educate the educators on. Uh, or, or the approach that we need to take is to say, we're not trying to remove you from the process. We want you to spend more time doing what you do and why you got into to teaching in the first place. And that's working with students. It's seeing students progress. It's, it's educating, it's sharing your knowledge. It's mentoring, it's tu tutoring where it makes sense. But it's taking all that other stuff and, and automating that. You're still in control but automating that so you have more time to focus on why you do what you do. And I, I think, especially if you're, if you're thinking about how do I approach educators, how do I approach schools and avoid, be, uh, avoid them seeing me as a threat, I think that's probably the first step is just, it's, it's educating them on exactly what we're talking about. It's not about removing people from jobs, it's about making you more productive. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I find with teachers that they're not used to having that conversation. Uh, you know, they, they're used to working long hours and, and you know, putting in the hard yards with their students. And so they're just not used to that sort of an approach. I see um, a lot of similarities between you know, Noodle Factory and some of the words that you're using and some of the words that we've been using in, uh, at, at Cisco Meraki. So for example, the, the giving the time back, right? And mm. some of the synergies that we see you know we spend a lot of time simplifying powerful technology because we, we, we want IT staff lean IT teams to not worry about you know making the technology run we're, we're, we want them to worry about and focus on the experiences that the technology and the platforms can offer and it sounds exactly like what you're trying to achieve you're trying to achieve simplifying streamlining the work that teachers need to do so that they can focus their time on, on like the fun stuff right stuff that yeah. really elevates the experiences of not just the students, but their own personal experience. Well, when you're working with a company and you go in and you talk about AI, specifically automation, it, it's probably re relatively easier to pinpoint what is value in that equation. So that, that might literally be you know, to the bottom line. Let's, let's drive more value to the bottom line. When, when you're working with nonprofit very broadly in education specifically, Identifying what value is in that context, I think that can be tricky. Um, so, 
value for a, for a teacher might mean that they're able to manage their schedule more proactively to you know, not have to work 10, 12 hours, six, seven days a week. Uh, that could be value. Uh, for, for the administration, certainly it's gonna be teacher productivity, but it's also gonna be learning outcomes and learning efficacy. Um, and so these are all things that when we pilot with schools, um, during the pilot, we really try to measure these things so that we're showing quantifiable value. It doesn't really show up in dollars and cents all the time for a school, but it shows up in experience, it shows up in learning outcomes, and sure. the, the qualitative part of what we do is, you know, as a teacher, the, the, the stress goes down, the pressure is relieved. As a student, uh, anecdotally, we've gotten feedback that students feel more confident navigating the content and more prepared to go into the classroom, uh, whether that's virtual or face-to-face, -to, -face, to do the exam. So it's that's value. Uh, now, it's it's sometimes hard to put a dollar figure on that, and, and that's that can be a challenge. But when we have administrators and teachers telling us these are the things that we're seeing, you know, we chalk that up to applying technology in a unique way in education, and so it, it's our job to try to educate them on uh, and, and connect the dots between the technology and those outcomes. You've got me, um, you've got me hooked on this defining value um, element, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at you know how do we, how does Noodle Factory, and then how does the audience, right? I'm just, I'm just thinking about the audience as well. How, how do we help the faculty, the, the head of ed tech, IT, how, how do how are they, how do you see them currently working together, if they are working <laughs> together? And what is your current perception of, you know, their respective understanding of values? And is it, is it the power of three or are they still working in silos? My, I, 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 leading the witness, I feel like they're working in silos. <laughs> and this could be an area where Noodle Factory, Cisco Meraki could help, you know, bridge the gap as well. Mm -hmm. But I'd, I'd be keen to hear from them. Yeah, I think one thing that we often see, so we often work directly with either the head of head tech or faculty, um, less so with IT. So I think that one way we could really bridge it is um, to probably get IT more involved or a better, giving them a better understanding of what goes on or what are the problems of the faculty. Um, oftentimes, you know, it's, it's, ed tech actually involves a lot of people. It's not just the academic or the faculty or the student or IT, there's also one other person that it affects is actually the parent as well. Ah, yeah. So, so actually to, to think about ad tech, it's not just you know one person that would buy into the solution. It's really, you have to kind of think of all different angles. So when we go into the schools, normally we speak to the faculty first, identify if there are challenges that we can help them solve. But then after that, with any type of digitization, we have to think about including IT quite early because there are a lot of issues or a lot of things to be addressed like privacy concerns, confidentiality, you know, kind of protection of the, the students' information mm. as well. Yeah, it, you know, the, the narrative around cloud for so many years has been this is a, a business-led or in our case a faculty-led conversation. And we find that that is absolutely true. So uh, the, the sorts of people from a title perspective that we deal with might be head of ed tech, head of digital, head of online, maybe learning innovation. So these are all sort of faculty jobs. They tend to be people who wear two hats. They, mm. They're probably still teaching and maybe because of uh, a passion around the use of technology in education or maybe they've just been given the assignment so they're, they're wearing these two hats, and that's that's where we tend to start the conversation. And there's an awareness of cloud and, yeah. and the fact that we're delivering via cloud platforms. Um, and the narrative there has so for so long been, yeah, go to those owners of the application or the owners of the outcome because you can. They can make the decision, mm -hmm. and we find that that's very true. However, IT still needs to be involved. Right. Um, in fact, we were just speaking with a very large school uh, last week uh, in the UK, and uh, they, they have uh, uh, they have a, a bunch of schools here in Singapore as well. And the CIO got involved. Now, he he hasn't been involved at all in the conversation, but it was actually a really valuable discussion 
only because the head of ed tech pre-wired him, basically went in and said, here's what we've been, been talking about. Here's why we want to do this. You know, here we've answered all these questions. We've ticked all the boxes on security and privacy and integration and single sign-on. So all of these things are really that are really really important. So the CIO had all of those questions answered in advance before our conversation, and then our discussion basically became how do we implement? You know, what's what's the right timing? What's the right implementation plan? So the CIO was already on board. We've had other conversations where the CIO has not been brought in and he, he becomes a barrier. Yeah. So I don't think there's anything different about that. We, we know that that connection needs to happen. Um, if the customer, in our case, the faculty, if they're proactive in doing that, it just paves the way. If they're not connected with IT or they're not proactive, it's another, another sales cycle that kicks off. I'm, I'm definitely, again, seeing similarities, right? In in the motion of engaging you know, educational institutions. I think the combination of the faculty, ed tech, IT, when working together is just inevitably going to deliver A, a full on better experience and B, more than likely that better experience will come more quickly. Um, when, when we think about you know, engaging IT, because typically Cisco Meraki, we, we, we talk to, to the head of IT, it's really around that consistent experience, right? And it starts with secure connectivity. Mm. It starts with an experience that is similar, whether you're teaching from home or you're teaching on campus, you have access to the files, you can access them confidently, securely. It's the same thing for students when they're enjoying, you know, and learning from, from home and then they're going back to the campus, the reliable um, high speed, you know, wireless uh, internet access. I mean, these are all the experience that we try to, to provide, but the underlying architecture for us is just, you know, the cloud you know, managed network, that's the platform, and it's, it's infinitely, you know, powerful, and I know your solution is also cloud, cloud-based, and so we, we had a great conversation. I'm conscious of time. Um, I'm even more conscious that um, part of the dialogue that we started with our audience was around trying, striving to deliver something a bit more tangible. So, so Yvonne, for the audience that would like to know a little bit more about Noodle Factory, maybe even give it a try, what, what, what do you have currently to offer um, someone out there that might be interested in? One thing that we do a lot of, and that's how we normally start working with any institution, is to do pilots. And that's something that we're very excited to do because we want to first show the value that we can bring. And these would be typically three to six month pilots, so like for the entire semester. So they can really see the value of that from the teacher's perspective, from the administration's perspective, as well as from the student's perspective. So they are key measurables. Um, so this is definitely something that we offer to, to different schools who are interested. So I heard Jim mention the UK. That's, that's, that's outside our remit right now, right? We're going to focus on, on, on Asia Pacific um, area. Are there any um, countries that you are seeing traction in today? Are there any countries that you're specifically you know, interested in expanding to? Because we have a broad audience, right? Literally, this will be going out to all countries across Asia Pacific. Yeah, I mean, we started I mean, because we're based in Singapore, so obviously we have quite a number of schools we're working with in Singapore. Um, but we're definitely looking at uh, expanding to the regional countries. Uh, we've already started working with a school in Malaysia, and we're looking at Philippines and Indonesia as the next points because these are really big geographies, uh, big schools, high student to teacher ratio, where they could really benefit from our platform. I would like to offer um, similar. Um, to anyone in the audience that would be interested in embarking on cloud uh, managed networking, uh, cloud managed IT is what I should be saying, um, please do reach out to, to Meraki, um, whether it's wireless, whether it's um, security, whether it's physical security, um, you know, we, we do have the full portfolio and what I'd be really keen to do is um, to expose you to our platform as well, uh, so you can see the simplicity. Um, this is the first of what I hope to be many, many conversations. Let's see what the feedback is and then maybe we'll double down on a specific topic in the near future and see this audience again soon. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe.